Uh, so I'm going to start with a quick interactive poll. Uh, the interactivity is simply if you see an answer that corresponds with your situation, go ahead and click on your screen. This just gives me a sense of who's in our audience today and maybe your experience with Snagit. So let's start with the first one, which is, uh, I'd love to know what task you typically use Snagit for. Uh, informally explaining a process, perhaps reporting technical issues or bugs, giving or requesting feedback, uh, illustrating a presentation or slide deck, or maybe something else that's not in this list. And if you have another use for it, uh, we'd love to know about it in that question and answer pane. Uh, I will tell you the entirety of my life over the last couple of days has been using Snagit to give or request feedback. So that's my current use case amongst all the wonderful things that Snagit does. I'll give everybody another second or two here to click on their response. All right, so it looks like 45% uh, of you are informally explaining a process or demonstrating something, while 28% are illustrating a presentation or slide deck. So wonderful, thanks for answering that question for me, appreciate it. Uh, question two, do you happen to know what version of Snagit you are currently using? Are you on the latest version, 2020, perhaps 2019 or 2018, maybe a slightly older version like Snagit 13 or four on the Mac, or something older than that, and you're just here to kind of see what's new with Snagit and what is possible. <clears throat> okay, it uh, looks like 78% of you uh, that answered are on the current version and 18% uh, are on 2019. That's wonderful. So if you're on 2018 and newer, most of what you see will be familiar to you in terms of how it looks. So you'll be good to go, but the others will be just fine as well. All right, last question. I'm just curious. How did you hear about today's webinar? Uh, did you get an email from TechSmith, perhaps one of our many uh, social media posts about it? Uh, did you get an in-product message in Snagit letting you know that this webinar was a thing? Uh, did an awesome coworker tell you about it? Or are you signed up for the TechSmith newsletter and you learned about it through there? Because we actually have a myriad of free webinar offerings every month. So uh, if you're not signed up for that newsletter, it would be good to check it out. All right, so it looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, 60% of you got it through an email. And then a tie, 16% either got an in-product message in Snagit or are um, subscribed to our newsletter. So awesome. Thank you so much for answering those questions. I really, really appreciate it. And now let's get ourselves into the product, what we're here for. So Snagit is broken up into two parts, the capture window and the editor. And we're going to start here with the Snagit capture window. Now, as a reminder, Nikki mentioned that I am using Snagit 2020 on a PC, but this capture window will look exactly the same on the Mac side. The only major difference is uh, the Windows capture window can float and I can move it around wherever I'd like, while the Mac version has it anchored to the top of the screen in your menu bar somewhere, usually in the upper right hand corner, assuming that's where your menu bar is. So the capture window, you can actually do a lot of things within Snagit right here from the capture window. First, I wanna draw your attention to the left-hand side where we have the three primary capture types within Snagit. We have the all-in-one capture style, we have the image capture style, and we have the video capture style. Uh, for me personally, I leave Snagit in the all-in-one capture state because I, I'm not really great at making decisions and using the all-in-one uh, option allows me to make a game time decision when it comes to a capture. All in one, as we'll see here in a second, will allow me to start a capture process and then decide if I want it to be an image, a video, or perhaps even a panoramic capture, which is also capable within Snagit. Okay. To initiate a capture, there's a couple different ways. One is the giant red capture button that's right here on the capture window. You can click on that and begin your capture process by using the crosshairs, which we'll show here in just a second. The other way is to use what we call the global hotkey. The global hotkey when you install Snagit for the first time is mapped to your print screen button on your keyboard. So if you see print screen on your keyboard and print screen is not attached to any other program, that will also initiate a capture uh, here from the capture window. If you don't have a print screen button on your keyboard, or if you prefer to use a different key combination, you can change it just very easily. All you need to do is click in the print screen area or where the text is and use your keyboard to assign another uh, keyboard shortcut. Like for me, I might use control shift K. And now if I use the combination control shift K, it will also initiate a capture within Snagit. Uh, for my sanity, for the rest of this demonstration, I'm actually gonna click in there and switch it back 
to my print screen button because actually that is how I initiate captures within Snagit. I use the print screen button. All right, so let's do something pretty basic. Let's take a, a basic screen capture with Snagit. And I'm gonna use um, a website I have here. This is a mock-up of like a task manager tool uh, just here in the browser. And I'm gonna pull up the capture window. So I've got it here in front of me. Reminder, I have the all-in-one capture button selected. So I'm gonna click the capture button. And when I do that, I'm presented with these. These are the Snagit crosshairs. And the crosshairs allow you to do a couple of different things. But before I use them specifically, let's take a quick look around the screen. As I move the crosshairs around, you can see different parts of this particular screen, because it's a browser, uh, light up. If I click in any of these spaces that are lit up, where you see the dotted yellow line around it, that is the capture Snagit will take. It'll uh, decide that that's the area you want to capture, and it will just instantly grab that section. If I want the entirety of the screen captured, there is a button at the top here that's called full screen, and I can click on the full screen button, and it'll capture everything in the viewable area, which for this would also include the, uh, the address bar and the tabs that I have open here across the top of the screen. If I'm on a screen that will do any scrolling, because there are some pages where there's more to the page than what's on it, you can actually do a scrolling capture if enabled by clicking on any of these yellow bouncing uh, arrows and it will scroll the entire page. And we'll show what that looks like here in just a second. But to do a standard region capture by using the crosshairs, what we're gonna do is simply place our crosshairs where we wanna start the capture and then click the mouse button and drag over the area we wanna capture. And if you notice, as I'm dragging the crosshairs, certain area of the screen is lighting up and the rest is staying gray. Anywhere where it's lit up is where I would capture when I'm ready. So let's uh, drag those over here to the bottom right-hand corner. And when I let go of my mouse button, I'm presented with a couple options. And these options are here because I left Snagit in the all-in-one capture state, meaning I get to choose what kind of capture I'd like to make. And the options across the bottom here is to take a screen image, basic Snagit image capture, I do have the ability to record a screen video right here within this area. And I can also do a panoramic capture, which we'll show uh, later on. I also have the capability to set specific sizes based on width and height pixels. So if I need something to be uh, you know, 1280 by 720, I can just type those numbers in here. I can reset the capture and start it over without actually capturing anything in case I just misplaced it or didn't put it where I wanted it. Or I can back out of the capture completely. Now, while I have not captured anything yet, I haven't decided on any of these buttons, I can still move the capture window itself around. So maybe I wanted it over here to the right a little bit more, or if I wanna make subtle adjustments here, I can still do that. And I can make adjustments with any of the radio buttons around the outside. So if I wanted to resize it or make sure it's just right, I can do all of that as well. But when I'm ready and I wanna take an image capture, I simply hit the camera button over here on the left to take an image capture. And just like that, the capture is taken and dropped here in the Snagit editor, which is now ready for editing. But we're gonna get to that here in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and go back and do uh, another capture. Uh, this time, I'm going to use a different uh, website. We're gonna pull up this one. This is our Fidelity Holdings page. This is a, a mocked page for demonstration. And I wanna show uh, what it looks like to do a panoramic capture. So a panoramic capture and a scrolling capture are a little different. So let's show what those look like. So I have the all-in-one tab selected. I'm gonna click the capture button. And this time, instead of doing a region capture or clicking on full screen, which would grab the entirety of the page, I'm actually gonna click on this arrow down here at the bottom. And when I do that, uh, it'll actually scroll. Let me actually hit escape. I just wanna show that this web page has more content to it. I'm just kind of scrolling down here. There's more to the page that's available. So when I start that capture, uh, this time I'm going to uh, click on that yellow bouncing arrow at the bottom and snag it. I just kind of clap my hands by my microphone to show you I'm not scrolling. Snag it will automatically scroll down the page and take four to five images per second. And what it does then is stitches all those images together and gives me a representation of the entire web page. And what's helpful is it grabs everything. Uh, if a page has a definitive bottom like this one does, it does a really great job of it, but it also captures all the outside information. And if you can see on my screen, there's this kind of like toolbar on the right. This is actually the webinar software and it captured it 
multiple times as it was scrolling. So this is great for a quick capture of the entirety of a page. If you have a perpetually loading page, uh, this is typically your social media pages, uh, your Facebooks, your Twitters, and stuff like that. Or if you have a page like uh, internal communications, perhaps Slack or Teams or Flowdoc, uh, those pages will constantly load. Snagit's scrolling capture will try and continuously capture that, and it might not give you a great result because that image would be massive. So to kind of give you a better way to do a capture like that, we actually have created something called scrolling, or excuse me, panoramic capture. And panoramic capture looks like this. Let's go back into the capture window. We will still make sure we're in the all-in-one tab. We'll click the red capture button. And this time, instead of clicking those scrolling, bouncing arrows, I'm actually gonna use the crosshairs and just grab this center section of the page. Just this little bit, not even the full one, just the center section. And instead of clicking an image, I'm gonna choose panoramic capture. So what panoramic capture is going to do when I click on it is it's going to give me this start button and it'll give me a representation of the screen that I'm capturing right here. All I need to do is gently scroll down the page and anything that's in that area that I grabbed, which you can now see is this yellow uh, box here, anything that's in that area will be captured by Snagit. And when I'm ready, I hit the stop button it's gonna stitch all those images together, just like it did with the scrolling capture, but now it's gonna give me a very clean, very precise capture of what I wanted on the page. So the difference is, this is a scrolling capture, which captures the entirety of the page, including the areas to the left and right of the primary content that's not really utilized. And then there's the panoramic capture, that's a little bit more surgical, very tight, very clean and controlled capture style. What's really great about that panoramic capture is not only does it work vertically, top to bottom, but if I had something on my screen like, uh, let's say a spreadsheet or something where there was columns or content to the right or left, you could also scroll right and left to capture all that content and it would stitch that images, those images all together. Really, really powerful tool, really, really helpful. All right, uh, let's go back to the capture window here. So the capture window, there's a couple other things you can do with it right here from the capture window. And one of those things is called a preset. And the presets are down here at the bottom of the capture window. So a preset is a series of properties assigned to a capture so that you can make repetitive captures with the same properties in place. For example, let's say I wanna take a series of captures that I'm going to drop into a Word document because I'm creating some documentation for some, uh, some explanation or uh, job aids for my coworkers. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a preset that makes that so easy to do and gives me a consistent capture state every time. So let's click on this plus button here and we're gonna create a new preset. When I click on new preset, it's gonna give me this. This is an edit preset menu and it's gonna allow me to uh, make specific changes to what I want uh, the capture type to be. Uh, in this case, we're going to do an image capture. So I'm gonna select the image capture button and it's gonna open up and show me all the different options available for image capture. We're gonna do a style of selection called region capture and region capture is just using those crosshairs and clicking and dragging over the area that I want to capture. Uh, using this drop down menu, there are various other options available to you. And in fact, we get a little deeper into these in one of our diving deeper Snagit webinars uh, when we're talking about getting faster. So if you're interested, keep an eye on those webinar listings. We can add an effect to the image right here as well. So the effects could be anything from borders to scaling the image to shadows, watermarks, so on and so forth. Let's make ours uh, pretty basic. We're going to use this uh, border. And when I choose a border, there is a gear icon that shows up to the right, and that allows me to make a little bit of selection as to the type of border. So not only can I choose the width of it, let's make it uh, here nine or 10 there, maybe 11, that's yeah, gonna be 11. And we can change the color of it. Now this, uh, I always love this part. I am not a designer at all. I am a trainer and I'm a former teacher. So when things become easier for me, I'm thankful. And one of the things we make easy is when you make a color selection within Snagit. When I click on the color option here, I'm presented with the entirety of the color wheel. I can move this thing around, I can select color, you name it, infinite colors, infinite colors. Um, if I happen to know specific colors I need, like a hex code, I can put the hex code in here if I 
a person that knows the RGB code, I can use that, but I'm not a designer and I need help. And help comes in the form of this. This is the eyedropper tool. And I can actually click on the eyedropper tool and just acquire a color from somewhere else on the screen. Like maybe I want this, this green safe preset color. So if I click on that, now the border changes colors to match that exact green. So I now have that green color as my border. I can choose share destinations as well. So this is where uh, I can pick where the image is going to go. So when I expand my share menu, I may have many more options than you do on your system. Uh, it's, uh, the available options to you are based on a couple things. One, uh, programs you have installed on your computer. Two, if you're doing using Snagit in a work environment, it may be whatever the, your IT department has exposed for you and made available as share destinations. Uh, for this case, we're gonna actually share these images right to Microsoft Word. So I'm gonna select Word, and it's gonna share these into a document for me. Over here on the right, we have a couple more options, a preview and editor. Uh, that's where it would open up the editor in case I wanted to do any annotation. For this particular preset, I just wanna share those images into Word. I don't need the step where it goes into the editor. I'm just sharing them over and creating a document. So I'm gonna to toggle that off, and I'm gonna leave the other options off as well. Copy to clipboard, capture cursor, stuff like that. When I'm ready, I hit the save preset button and it drops this into my presets and it gives it a name based on its properties. It says image with effect to word. Um, that's not real helpful to me. So I'm gonna come in here and rename it and say green border word. So now I know this, this capture type is gonna be a green border sent to word. A Couple things you can do with presets from this point. One, I could start this preset and start this capture by clicking on the red camera button right to the left of it. So I can make a capture right now. I could assign it, uh, uh, excuse me, I could assign it its own hotkey. So if I'm gonna be doing this on a regular basis and I'm gonna get into a rhythm of capturing, I can create a hotkey that's just for this green border with to word uh, capture. I can also, with this gear icon, do a couple other things. I can edit it so I can go in and make changes to it. Maybe I don't want the green border. Maybe I want a different color. I can rename it. I can duplicate it. I can get rid of it. But more importantly to me, I can export this. I can share this Snagit preset file with anyone else on my team that has Snagit. I can hit export. It creates a little Snag theme file, and it's tiny, so it can be emailed. And then all they need to do is double-click on it from their email. And just like that, you and that person have the Snagit preset in place. So this is really great for creating consistency with your team or with a product, or excuse me, a project, especially if your color is matching, say, corporate colors or something like that. You can do all those from there. So we're going to actually do a capture with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this web page back up that we were just using. And before I do a capture, I do want to go down here to my taskbar. And I want you to notice, uh, I do have a lot of programs down here, but none of them are Word. I don't have Word open. I do, however, have Word installed on my computer, so that is a true fact. So let's go ahead and hit that red button next to it, green border with Word. We're gonna get the uh, crosshairs because we asked it to be a region capture. And I'm gonna do a quick little capture of this top section. And as soon as I let go of the mouse button, the capture is taken, it's dropped into a Word document, and when it opens in Word, which it's showing is available right now all of a sudden, I click in there, and just like that, I have that image with the green border like I requested. And to show you how quick this is, if we bring up that capture window again and click green border with Word, and I just take a capture here within uh, Word itself, as soon as I let go, it drops it in ready in the document. So when you share to destinations like Word, Snagit's going to look for wherever your cursor is. So if I had dropped this image in here, the original one up here, and then started uh, typing some text, wherever the cursor lies after that is where the image is going to get dropped in. Uh, presets are really, really helpful for quick, consistent capture types, uh, and you can share them to various destinations, Word, PowerPoint, shoot them into an email, send them to a printer if you're creating content that way. So as far as what I wanted to show with the capture window in this state, this is what I was gonna cover in uh, the capture window. So Nikki, before we go into the editor and show how to edit some of the images we've already taken, uh, I'd love to find out from you or any of the other tech smithies if there's been any questions that have come in so far regarding any of the processes I've shown or anything about the capture window itself.
we do have one question and it's regarding the scrolling capture uh, example that you walked through and the question is when you do an auto scrolling capture can you crop out the parts that you don't need yes you can yeah actually that's uh, before we did panoramic capture that's exactly how i used uh the scrolling capture so when we go into the editor i will show that and nikki if you can keep me honest to that i will make sure that you can show how you can because we have a capture of the entirety of the front page of the fidelity holdings uh, i can show exactly how that can be cropped out and trimmed to your use case absolutely all right, we have one more question from William. He asked, does the preset send to new documents only or any document that happens to be open? When I'm assuming he's talking about the word preset. Sure, so actually when we create a preset and I glossed over this, so thank you for that question. Let's go back into the preset itself and hit edit, which is gonna bring up that preset editor. When you choose a share destination, like I chose Word, there is a gear icon next to it if I click on the gear icon, it does show you a couple of things. One, uh, it shows that you can copy the image into the document or just link to it. If I have Word closed, like I did uh, this in this example, it will open a brand new document and drop the image in there. If I have a document open and it's live, I've been working in it, and I have my cursor placed, when I send something from Snagit to Word, it will go to that active document. The only time it goes to a new document without your explicit instruction is when Word is closed and it's assuming you want to start a new document. But it will go to your Word document that is currently open wherever you have your cursor placed. Perfect. And then Jane has a question about panoramic capture. She asks, can you go in all directions for the capture or are you limited to just left, right, or up and down? So I'm guessing the question would be, can you go like diagonally? I'm guessing that's what she means as well. So let's uh, let's do a, a um, slightly modified version of a panoramic capture. So we're going to do the all-in-one capture. We're going to do a small little section of the screen, maybe just this left-hand corner here. And I'm going to click the panoramic capture. So when I hit start and I begin to move the page around, this is actually, let me back out of this. For this to work accurately, this cannot be full screen. We need a little bit more control of our web page. So let's do this. So I think it needs to be even smaller. Got to have scroll, we have to have scroll bars both ways. This, this page is not the best example, so I apologize. But when we do that panoramic capture by grabbing just a little section of the screen, when we hit panoramic and hit start, uh, anywhere that falls into this yellow area of capture is what's going to be captured. So yes, we showed vertically, and then we showed horizontally, or we're showing horizontally. And as you see that, it's actually stitching those images together. So could I intentionally go diagonally like like this in, in with uh, explicit drag capability? Uh, if I have a screen that I can move around myself, I can go ahead and slide it back and forth. But once we stitch those together, it's grabbing the images as we requested. So um, yes, you can. You just wanna be very deliberate in your movement to make sure it's capturing exactly what you want. All right, and I think our final question is gonna be from David. He asks, can you send a capture to multiple locations with a preset? So if I wanted to go into, say, this uh, green border with Word, and I go into edit, if I want to add an additional destination, you can. At the very bottom of the share destination list, there is an option that says to either remove the current destination or add another destination. So in this case, uh, if I wanted to share it to Word, and then maybe I wanted to also share it to um, an email. If I go ahead and hit save preset and initiate a capture, and make that capture with that preset, it's going to not only drop it into a Word document for me, it's also starting to open um, my Outlook and it's created not only the Word document, which is right here. So there's the image we just took into Word and it sent it into a, we'll go ahead and not save this. It sent it into a brand new blank 
uh, email. Now, reminder, if you're going to share a image from Snagit to an email, it has to be a desktop client. It won't automatically send to um, a web-based client. For that case, you'd want to use a copy and paste method. But yep, you can send it to multiple destinations at once. All right, we do have one more question. It is from, from Amit and he says, is there a way to take the screen capture in your clipboard so you can paste it anywhere you would like? Yeah, yep. In fact, that's how I typically use Snagit. Um, right here in the capture window itself, by default, there is an option that says copy to clipboard and it is turned off. All I need to do is toggle it on. And when you take a capture, it'll follow all the other parameters that are set up here in Snagit. So if it's going to an editor or if you're capturing the cursor and whatnot, all of those will be followed, but we will also place it on your clipboard. Uh, I typically use Snagit a lot with our chats um, within the company. So if we're sending information through FlowDoc or into Skype, uh, I have it copied to my clipboard. So at any moment I can take that capture, oops, sorry, and send it uh, where I want and paste it where I want. So that is actually my typical use case. I just happen to have it turned off because it is how uh, Snagit comes installed for your, your for your purposes. So I want to make sure I'm looking the same way as you guys do. Perfect. That wraps up our questions for now. But just as a reminder to everyone attending, please feel free to keep submitting your questions through the questions panel and we'll have a team to respond and we'll also save time at the end for more questions. Great. Thanks for, yeah, and thanks for having those questions come in. We really appreciate it. So the next thing I want to show is the other half of Snagit, which is that of the editor. So let's minimize this. To get to the editor, of course, you just take a Snagit capture, which will automatically preview it in the editor if you have this button turned on. Or I can open the editor from the capture window by clicking on open editor. If you have it installed on your computer as well, uh, the editor and the capture window are two different icons. The capture window is the red Snagit S, and the editor is the blue Snagit S. So you could also open them separately that way. So let's go ahead and open the editor from the capture window. And this is a little tease because these are the images we've taken so far today. Uh, but let's actually take a minute to walk around the four primary parts of the editor. <clears throat> Those are the toolbar, which is here across the top, which is where most of the tools that you use on a regular basis are stored, as well as others available to you here within the drop down section underneath more. You have the section over here to the right, which is called the quick styles and tool properties. This section changes dynamically based on the different tools that you've selected to use within Snagit. You also have the canvas, which is right here in the middle. This is where your capture is going to come and where you're going to do the majority of your editing and annotating and, and adjustments to your image. And then you also have this at the bottom, which is the recents tray. So this is where your recent captures are going to be kept. And this also ties together with our library, which is actually located in a button in the upper left-hand corner here at the top. And we'll explore that here in a second as well. So first things first. Let's talk about the toolbar. So the toolbar, when you install Snagit for the first time, we set a, a default set of tools across the top. You see a favorites, uh, your arrow tool, text tools, call out, so on and so forth. Um, underneath this more dropdown, as I stated, there are other tools available to you. Everything from the blur tool to the crop tool to the cutout tool. Cutout tool is my favorite tool. Uh, highlighter, step tool, you name it. There's lots in here. But we've realized over time that not everyone uses Snagit the same way. And that being the case, we want to allow you to make Snagit yours and really customize the experience. That can be done by going to that more drop down button. And at the very bottom, there's an option that says customize toolbar. When I click on that, I am given access to all the different tools and menu options available in Snagit. And it now makes my toolbar uh, dynamic to the point where I can change it. For example, uh, if I go across the tool set here at the top, I'm not a big person that uses shapes. And I know if I need them, I can always find them under the more dropdown area. So I'm actually going to click on the shape tool and just drag it off my toolbar. Uh, same with the fill tool. I don't use it as often, but I can always get to it later. So I'm going to drag the fill tool off as well. I do, however, use the callout tool on a very regular basis. So I'm going to click on the callout tool and drag it up into my toolbar and I can place it wherever I want. Uh, I'm going to put it right here between the arrow and text section. I also use our step tool quite often. So I'm going to drag the step tool up 
and drag it up here in between the stamp and move tool. If I scroll down, there's other options available to me, the other menu options like uh, deleting image and rotation and stuff like that. But the one I find most useful are the share destinations. So once again, the share destinations are relevant to you based on what you have installed on your computer and or what uh, access your IT department has given you. Uh, so I like to put a few of my regular share destinations up on my toolbar for ease of use. Uh, I often, often, often I'm sending documents and images to Camtasia, our video editing software. So I'm going to drag Camtasia over here to the right because this is where I put my share destinations. I could put them pretty much anywhere. Um, I send stuff to Twitter when I'm posting um, socially there. Um, I do, as we said, send stuff to Word. You saw that earlier. And uh, yeah, I also send stuff directly to my printer so that I can print documents off with those images. So I can share right to those locations by clicking on any of these buttons. When my toolbar is the way I want it, and I can go through and make sure any of the effects that I want are there, I just click on the Done button. And now my toolbar is locked back into place and it's set up exactly the way I want to use it. Uh, another good use case for the editable toolbar is if you're working on a laptop, you have less real estate on your screen. So you might need to make it a little smaller for uses for you. Or if you happen to be on a large monitor or a dual monitor setup, you can put everything up there and have plenty of room to work. To the right of the toolbar is those share destinations that I had, but there's also a share button, which is where you can share images and videos out of Snagit right here from your editor as well. Below that is the quick styles area and tool properties. And as I said, as you select different tools across your toolbar, the quick styles change, they're dynamic and they're able to be uh, selections made from each of those. So for example, if I wanted to go to my arrows tool and add this red arrow to the submit button, I simply would add it by clicking and dragging and placing that arrow exactly where I want it. While that arrow or any other tool is selected, I can affect how it looks based on its tool properties. Everything from you know its width, its opacity, uh, maybe I want to change it to uh, this green color, or maybe like I did before, I want to use my eyedropper tool and match it to the green border color that I acquired before. So now there's some continuity, there's some matching colors available. One thing I do want to note to you is something that's newer to Snagit over the last couple iterations, and that is if you select one of these tools, you'll notice there's a little star in the upper right-hand corner of the tool itself. Well, that star corresponds with our favorites menu, and the favorites menu are over here on the left-hand side currently of the toolbar, and favorites are where you can add specific tools and tool types to your favorites menu for quick access. For example, uh, maybe I want to use this purple arrow on a regular basis. So I'm going to click that little star and change it from white to yellow. And when I do that, that purple star is now going to show up here in my favorites menu. So that's pretty helpful. And the same thing can be done if I make any tool modifications. So if I click on the arrow we just created here on the canvas where we modified the color, um, it shows up here as a custom creation. All I need to do is hit the plus button below it. And that arrow is now added to my quick styles and I can further customize my experience by clicking on the white arrow to changing it yellow. And now I have that green arrow available to me as well. And the same would follow suit with any of the other tools, the text tools, the call out tools. Uh, if I make changes or if I wanna add them to the favorites menu, I can do that by clicking on these and choosing the star button. Okay, so the canvas we kind of teased out a little bit. The canvas here is where you would make your adjustments and, and make your annotations. Uh, this is where I'm reminding myself that there was a question earlier, Nikki, they said where if we took a full screen capture, which I happen to do with this full screen scrolling capture, can I make uh, adjustments and cut things out? So this is where I would be able to do that right here within the canvas. I would select the image that I wanted to modify and I could go in and do a couple different things. If I want to crop it, the cropping tool is actually found underneath the more dropdown. I could select crop and make adjustments to this image by, you know, doing your tip. Whoops, that's not the way I wanted to crop it. Let's grab the cropping tool again and uh, grab the radial button. And maybe I want to crop it in a little bit like this and perhaps uh, bring this side into the left. And then when I'm done, that image has now been cropped and it will be cleaned up for me. Oh, it didn't hold the crop. That's my bad. So the other way I would make trims to this is when you actually 
hit the crop button there. Now it crops it out. Uh, when it's in its standard form like this, I can also make small adjustments to it by using tools like the cutout tool. I, I just I love the cutout tool. It can take a long image like this or a wide image. Typically for me, it is the uh, long image, is to use the cutout tool, select the style of cutout I want. In this case, we're going to do this one. This is the, uh, the tear button. And I simply bring my mouse and click and drag into the section I want to cut out. And when I let go, it removes that section, creates some transparency behind it, and now gives me uh, the entire image minus the section I cut out so I can give a little bit of a reference and continuity to it. Yep. So other tools that I love to use, like these quick styles, they also have the ability to favorite them uh, for the cutout tool. One other tool I do want to cover because I don't think it gets enough love, but it is a very powerful tool, and that is actually our stamp tool. When you click on the stamps, um, I actually have some customized stamps here that I've added in to my Snagit instance. But Snagit comes pre-installed with, geez, Nikki, correct me, I think it's over 3,000 stamps. And these stamps are high-quality vector form graphics that can be added to your images. And not only that, there's metadata built into them so you can search for them. For example, if I wanted, let's say, anything that's red, I can type in the word red and have everything that's in the Snagit library that stamps that's red or has R-E-D in the title available to me. Well, I actually don't want just red. I'd like a red X. There it is. That's the stamp I want. If I select a stamp, any stamp, I can come over here and place it on my image, and then I can resize it, move it around. And like I said, because they're vector graphics, they will not deteriorate as you stretch them out. They won't become fuzzy or anything like that. So just like that, I can add stamps to my images. And if I have custom stamps that I've uploaded, like if I have these here, let's get rid of my clearing area. Um, I have all custom stamps available to me as well. So if I wanted, say, my um, email signature, I could drop that on an image and have that available to me. So stamps are very, very powerful tool as well. Uh, last but certainly not least is the uh, recents tray, which we talked about here a little bit. We'll go ahead and cancel that out. Uh, where I have my recent captures as well as captures that I've taken prior to this. And then we talked a little bit about, but I wanna show the library. So the library button in the upper left-hand corner actually has a running history of every a capture you have made on that particular computer. So this is my demo station. So I actually only have only 69 images, two videos, and no animated GIFs. On my primary machine, I have over 10,000 images because I use Snagit, I don't know, a dozen or more times a day. It's just a regular, awesome, reliable tool that I use for good, clear communication. The library allows you to go through and find your images, your videos. Uh, you can actually sort through them based on the year they were captured, the application you used, or you could use something called tags, where you can actually apply an, a name or a tagged um, data to an image to be able to find them either in your tag list or by searching for them at the top of your screen. One more thing I wanna bring in before we bring uh, talk about video, because we're actually running super short on time today. We've had a lot to talk about. That is, with the introduction of Snagit 2020 last October, we added this button in the upper left-hand corner. It is a create button. And underneath that create button, there's two amazing tools. One that's called image from template and one that's called video from image. Video from images we cover in another webinar. So we're gonna pass on that for right now, but I do wanna quickly show you image from template. Uh, when I've mentioned a couple times in this webinar, I am not a designer, but oh my gosh, image from template, let's go ahead and click on that, actually allows you to use any number of a series of pre-installed templates to create a document. For example, if I wanted to use, um, oh, I don't know, a step-by-step, -step, this urban three-step landscape template, I can click on it and click create, and it brings this template here into my editor that I can now modify. It's already designed, there's colors, there's even these drop zones for images. So perhaps I was showing someone how to walk through a process. I could very simply click on an image, drag it into that area, and have it show up exactly where I want it. So let's go with the date range, we can grab that one, and maybe even the user reports here. So I drag those images in and they're now in my template. 
because it's in the editor itself, every aspect of this image is uh, editable. Everything from, I don't want it. Oops, still have my uh, stamp selected. So let's go ahead and re-add that image. Uh, I could come in here and change the title because the text is in here. So let's get to step by step and add subtitles. I can modify the images that are here by double clicking any of the images that I've added. And maybe I want to mm, reposition this so I can show exactly where I want people to focus on. This one is a little bit off, off kilter. So I'm going to scooch it over. And this one is a little bigger than I want. So I'm just going to shrink the size down so I can fit in all that content. Um, I can change the captions. I can change anything down here. It shows who it was created by. It shows the date that it was captured on. It even shows very proudly that it was made with Texman Snagit. But any of these things can be moved and deleted and modified. Perhaps you've added your company logo as a stamp and you can add those in as well. So when you share these images out, they are available to you as a completed document. It's a great way of sharing information, it keeps it clean, it's all justified. It is gorgeous. All right, last thing real quick. We didn't talk about it, but we're gonna talk about it now. And that's going back to the capture window. Uh, we talked about all-in-one capture. We showed an image capture. Let's show video because you can capture video within Snagit. So let's go to the original um, you know, team task sharing site. And we're gonna pull up the capture window. We're gonna do all-in-one capture. And this time I'm gonna drag using my region capture right over the center of the board and I'm going to choose video this time. And when I click on video, it actually is going to get Snagit ready to capture a video. And there's a couple things you can do here. One, there's a red record button that I could click to initiate the recording. Uh, Snagit does have the ability to capture your webcam. So with webcams, it's either on or off during your recording. It can't be on at the same time for picture in picture. That's not a functionality of Snagit, but this allows you to maybe do a very human engaged, uh, hi everyone, this is Jason, let's go through this process you can toggle it on and off in your recording. Uh, you do have the ability to record your voice. So we'll select a microphone here and turn that on so that everything I say is going to be captured. You can even use uh, the ability to capture the system audio. And we do have a diving deeper with Snagit session that's all about using um, video within Snagit. Uh, it's one of my favorite sessions that we do. So if you're interested in that, once again, techsmith.com slash webinars. But from this point on, I hit the red record button. We're going to get a three, two, one countdown and it's going to capture a video for us. So let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> Hi everyone. This is Jason. Uh, let's talk about how we can quickly add someone to our progress tracking board. Uh, to do this, we're going to go to the top of the screen and click on the plus button and we're going to add a new member. So we're going to click on the plus here. And today we're going to actually add in Matt Simon and add his email. Uh, his role for this purposes is going to be a follower. He's not going to have access to a lot of stuff, but I want him to be able to monitor things. We're going to click on follower, click add. And here Matt's now added to the manage member section. All I need to do is toggle him on and he is active and ready for us to be used. And he pops up here at the top. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. The power of Snagit video is this. As soon as I hit stop, that video is a rendered MP4 ready to go. And it's here in the editor, which we can preview using the play button. Hi everyone, this is Jason. Uh, let's talk about how we can quickly add someone to our progress tracking board. Uh, to do this, we're gonna go to the top of the screen and click on the plus button. And we're going to add we won't, new members. We won't go through the whole thing because you just saw me do it live. So just like this, this video is ready to be shared. And if I click the share button, uh, Snagit will gray out the areas of destinations it can't be shared to because most of these are image based but you can share it to twitter youtube uh, google drive slack which is new box OneDrive, all these available options if you need to make any small light edits to the video you can do that here as well using our selection tool and that's for something as basic as trimming out the front end maybe i wanted to trim off the first second or two i can click on any of these drag arms and slide them to the right and hit cut. Or if I wanted to take a section out of the middle, I could also, you know, grab a section here and hit cut. There's small light editing that you can do. Uh, these are for quick sharing of information. So the video is down and dirty. What you see is what you get. Really, really powerful tool. The other thing you can do with videos 
is to actually grab sections of it. Let's see here. We'll grab this section by using the selection tool. And I can make an animated GIF out of it by simply making the selection here and choosing the GIF button in the lower right-hand corner. When I click GIF, Snagit's going to ask, do you want to use that selection or the whole video? Well, animated GIFs are typically very short. We always recommend under 30 seconds. I personally do them under 15 seconds. I click Use Selection. Uh, make sure it's optimized for screen video, which is how I typically use it, but there are other options there. And then I click on the fade to black so that you know when the animated GIF ends. When I hit Create, Snag is going to chew through that little section we just made, and it will drop an animated GIF down here on my recent tray. It's seven seconds long. So if I hit play, uh, you'll see it actually loop through just like a normal animated GIF would. At the end, it's going to slightly darken on that last frame, and then it's going go back and loop again. Nikki, I'm looking at the time, and I'm realizing we've got like 11 minutes left, and I could go way, way deeper, but I think I want to take the opportunity now to double check with you and the rest of the TechSmithies who are supporting us remotely this morning, and we really, really appreciate that, uh, to see if there's any questions over anything I've covered here in the editor, any of the tools we may have talked about or passed over, perhaps anything about the capture window. Let's, let's talk Snagit for the next few minutes. Absolutely. We've got lots of questions coming in. So I'm going to keep this first one on topic with GIFs since that's what you just showed. But Mark mm -hmm. asks, can you make animated GIFs from a series of images rather than a video? So if I wanted to do a series of images captured into a GIF. So the way you would actually do that is utilizing the new, new one of the new tools in Snagit, which is underneath the Create button and choose video from images. So let's, for fun, grab just a couple images here. We'll grab, uh, well, let's grab these four images. If I choose create video from images and I position these exactly the way I want, let's just move this one over and this one here. If I hit record and I get my three, two, one countdown, I can make a video ab about this by simply toggling through my images and when I hit stop it drops that video right back into my editor and at this point even though I was talking through it that animated gif button is still available so I could take that entire video which is only seven seconds long because we like to keep animated gif short hit create gif and it takes that video of multiple images where I was just toggling through them and turns it into an animated gif just the same way so Thoughts about this would be, you want to make sure the images are nice and sized up so you could read them. Um, but yes, it's absolutely possible. All right. The next question is from Kathy, and she asks, can the short video clips from Snagit be sent to Camtasia to create one longer clip? Yes, I do this all the time. And I am not kidding. I did it like 15 times yesterday for the project that I was working on. So I can simply grab a video at a time. Like here's the video we just shot. If I click on Camtasia, and I'll just do it right now, it'll actually save the capture. It sends it over to Camtasia, which isn't open right now. And it will go ahead um, and drop it into Camtasia right into my media bin. So I would just go through and grab images, videos, anything that I've created in Snagit and it makes it available in Camtasia. So if I had four or five small short videos that I created in Snagit, I could combine them into a larger video within Camtasia. So Camtasia is now open. Uh, here's that video dropped right here on my media bin and on my timeline in Camtasia. All right, the next question is from Jim and he asks, where on my computer are my library files saved? So there is a default location for your library, and you can find that by going here into the editor and going to uh, Edit, Editor Preferences. And underneath this Library tab, it's going to show where it's stored. So it's actually buried, I say buried because you don't want to accidentally delete it or move it. Uh, it's usually under your user, app data, all the way underneath your product, uh, company and product, which is for us TechSmith Snagit Data Store. Now you can move that location if you would like, uh, by clicking on the folder button here and selecting somewhere else on your computer. Um, I typically keep it where it goes, but there's often cases where I'm upgrading computers and switching computers. Uh, in that case, I can take my Snagit library with me by creating a backup and saving that, say, to an external drive or a cloud destination. 
And then when I install Snagit on my new machine, I come right back into the editor preferences to the library. And instead of creating a backup, I choose restore backup, find that location, and I'm back up and running. Perfect. So the next question has to do with when you were showing the cutout tool in the editor, um, both Alexandra and Paul were asking, can you bridge the cutouts together? So the one you showed, I believe, was the shark tooth or the jagged edge cutout. Mm -hmm. um, but could you show the straight line one? Sure. Yep. So we'll go to the cutout tool here. So there's a couple versions of a straight line one. There's this one where it's a very clean cut. So if I wanted to remove this uh, becoming a member is simple section. I could simply click on the top of that. Well, and I let go of my mouse too early. Sorry. Yeah. Let's uh, undo that here real quick. Let's try it again. We'll click at the top, drag that section and let go. And that gives a very clean uh, cutout. So you really, unless you knew the content was there, it's not there for you now. Uh, there is one here that has a, a kind of a faded out section in the middle. If I make a selection here, it does show a fading out uh, with the transparency behind it. So I think the question was, can I combine different cutouts together? Well, that's that faded out one. Here's a torn or a wave edge. Here's a shark tooth style one. So you can combine them together if you would like, if that makes sense for your image. In fact, you could even do it with uh, horizontal ones and vertical ones as well. That is one funny looking image, Nikki. Yeah, I think they were mostly talking about like bringing the two um, separated sections together. So that's where the straight line one really yeah. helps. So nine out of um, 10 times, Nikki, that is the one I use is this one here, just for that clean cut. The times I use the cuts that have the transparency with them are mainly when I'm referencing maybe something at the top of a large image to the bottom. Uh, this happens a lot when you're doing design work and color matching and fonts and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yep, bringing them together, the straight line horizontal and the straight line vertical are gonna be your best bets. Perfect. Uh, the next most popular question I think we've gotten is in regards to stamps. A lot of people really loved when you were showing that off. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of folks are curious. You had mentioned the ability to create a custom stamp with a company logo. Um, not sure if you have all the time to show that right now, but if you could do a quick talk through of how that can be done. Sure. So underneath this drop down menu, when you're in Snagit stamps, these are where all the pre built um, categories are going to be everything from uh, business stamps to uh, uh, food and drink, travel and places. If you go to the My Stamps section, there is gonna be a button here at the bottom that says Organize Stamps. When you click on Organize Stamps, it's gonna open up your stamp collection section, including any stamps you may have already added, like there's some cartoon versions of me, that's fun. Uh, all you need to do is click Add Stamp, locate the stamp somewhere, uh, the image somewhere on your computer. So if I wanted to say add uh, another headshot, uh, let's use an older one here and I click open just like that that image is now added so that could have been the Snagit logo it could have been the TechSmith logo like I have right here and that adds it to my stamp collection I can organize them further by creating folders uh, creating new folders over here like there's one that's just me for other activities that I use uh, there's one I have here for musical notes. There's one I have for fake mustaches because you never know when you need a fake mustache stamp. Uh, and bacon, shout out to uh, Walter Pulowski. Uh, you have the ability to create folders and add custom stamps. All you need is to click Organize Stamps, add a stamp, and locate your company logo. All right, the next question has to do with the custom toolbar. And Rena asks, is there a limit to the number of items that you can add to your toolbar? I don't believe there is a hard limit. It comes down to two things for me, space and usability. So if I open up the more dropdown and hit customize toolbar, and I start adding everything, and I mean everything, I'm eventually gonna run out of space and I won't have space for all the tools. So there's a bunch of share destinations. Here's a duplicate button. Eventually, I'm gonna run out of space. In fact, these little 
uh, space separator spaces are showing where I still have space available. Uh, those can be moved around so that you can partition different things here. Um, you actually have spacers at the bottom of the list as well. So there's not a hard limit that I'm aware of. It really comes down to how much space you have on your screen or how big your screen is in terms of usability. Remember, I only put things in my toolbar that I'm going to use regularly, like right now, but everything's always available to me, either underneath the more menu or up in the edit or image menus here at the top of the screen. So while they may not be immediately available, they are still there available for you. Excellent. I think we have time for one more question. All right. Um, and this one comes from Jane and she's asking when you share to email from editor, does it go to a new email or does it go to one that you already currently have open? So if you don't have your email open, it opens a brand new email, uh, which is typically the way I, I use it. So let's test that theory. We'll do it live. So if I have just like a Word document or a PowerPoint, if I have email open and I create a brand new email, let's do that. And I have my cursor down here. Let's see if we share this image to email. it does in fact open a brand new email. So it does not go into the email you have existing. So uh, that's a good thing to note. So you'll craft a brand new email as well. Uh, if I'm gonna share something to an email that way, um, I do have it copied to my clipboard as my default. So that is how I would share it typically. Um, but that's a good question. It opens up a brand new email. All right, it does look like we're running out of time, so we're going to go ahead and close up the Q&A section. I wanted to remind everyone that this was a getting started webinar, so we are focused on some of the basic workflows in Snagit. But as you can see, it's still a pretty robust tool, so we encourage you to jump in and experiment with any of the tools that you may not be familiar with. Um, if, however, you are looking for some more advanced content, we do offer our Diving Deeper webinars for Snagit each month, and the topics do change each time. So be sure to go to our webinar page to sign up for those webinars. So thank you all for joining us today. You will receive a recording of this webinar, and we encourage you to share that recording with your coworkers or anyone else you think might benefit from the content. You can also encourage those folks to sign up to attend a future webinar if they would like to participate in the live Q&A. When you close out the webinar, we, you will see a quick survey pop up. It's four questions, so pretty short, um, but it does help us ensure that our content is providing the most value for future attendees. So please take the time to fill that out. As a follow-up to the webinar, we will be sharing several resources. The QR code you see on your screen right now, if you want to take a quick snap of that, will take you to a super helpful um, blog post that we have for resources if you are uh, newly finding yourself working remote like many of us at TechSmith. You'll also receive an email that includes a link to that resource as well as many tutorials, a series of YouTube videos on different ways to use Snagit, and of course the recording of this webinar. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at marketing at techsmith.com. And again, thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day.